What's going on guys? This video is part one of two on dynamic equilibrium and static equilibrium. We really want to understand this stuff pretty thoroughly because this idea of a dynamic equilibrium really forms a foundation for what's going on for the next couple of focuses. And it's a way more realistic way of looking at many of the types of chemical reactions you might encounter. So basically it's worth knowing. The dot points we're covering are found below the video. And to cover this, we're firstly and most importantly going to look at reversible reactions. Second, look at what it means to form an equilibrium. Then third, we're going to draw a key distinction between the two equilibriums that we come across, static and dynamic equilibriums. And finally, we're going to explain the distinction between an open and a closed system. Since there's a fair bit to cover though, this video is part one of two videos. So the first thing that we need to understand is what it means to have a reversible reaction. Now, here on the screen, we have a glass box with some gas molecules inside, which would typically be buzzing all over the place if we were to depict it accurately. And these gas molecules are reacting, with the compound, which we'll just call blue, reacting and converting into purple, just as we see here. Now, these colours could represent any chemical species, such as nitrogen dioxide to dinitrogen tetroxide, for example. But we'll just represent them with colours to simplify the illustration. And up to this point in chemistry, we have written equations for reactions like this, with an arrow going from left to right to represent the fact that reactants are turning into products, which also suggests that in a given reaction, all the reactants will turn into products. However, reactions aren't typically this straightforward. This is because what we find is that for many reactions, the reaction is actually capable of operating in the reverse direction, just like in this example here with purple reacting to produce blue. And these types of reactions, those that can proceed in both directions, are what we refer to as reversible reactions. And we indicate these reversible reactions with this double arrow thing here. And just to clarify, while I've isolated the forward and reverse reactions for the purpose of the explanation, in reality, these reactions are both occurring at the same time. So that's cool. We now understand that some reactions are in fact reversible. And this has some important implications for us in relation to equilibriums. The first and most important is that these reversible reactions are capable of reaching what we refer to as an equilibrium. An equilibrium is the point in a reversible reaction where the concentration of reactants and products is no longer changing, where the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. And this is a concept that's probably best understood visually. So here I have the chemical equation for the reaction of nitrogen dioxide to dinitrogen tetroxide, which as we can see is a reversible reaction. And as a bit of background knowledge on these compounds, nitrogen dioxide is a red-brown colour, while dinitrogen tetroxide is colourless. So to illustrate an equilibrium, let's just say that we have a tube of dinitrogen tetroxide, which is colourless. Since this reaction is reversible, it's going to be reacting in both the forward and the reverse direction. However, since we only currently have dinitrogen tetroxide, the reverse reaction is probably going to be happening faster than the forward reaction, meaning that it will generally appear to be proceeding in the reverse direction. This means that we'll get a net conversion of dinitrogen tetroxide into nitrogen dioxide. This change can even be observed visually, since the tube gradually becomes more of a red-brown colour, indicating an increasing concentration of nitrogen dioxide, and therefore a faster reverse reaction than forward reaction. Now, we'll talk about the reason for what happens next in another video, but as we get more and more nitrogen dioxide, the system tends to sort of fight back and try to reach a balance. It does this by increasing the rate of the forward reaction, slowing the rate of the reverse reaction, until eventually they are of equal rate. At this point, the colour of the tube is no longer changing, since the concentrations of these two compounds are also no longer changing. And this is what we refer to as the equilibrium. It's really important to note that while there's no colour change happening, 
meaning there's no chemical change occurring overall and the concentrations of the reactants and products aren't changing, that both the forward and reverse reactions are still occurring, just at the same rate. It's also key here to understand that we aren't saying that the reactants and products are of equal concentration. You could still have way more of the reactants than you do products. It's just that the concentrations are staying the same. So we now understand that some reactions are reversible, they proceed in both directions as indicated by the twin arrows, and we also know that these reactions eventually reach an equilibrium, where there is no longer a change in the concentration of products and reactants, or where the rate of the forward and reverse reactions are equal. Well, we've already covered a fair bit this video, so let's just take a break. I'll see you all in part two, where we'll be covering these final two sections, static and dynamic equilibrium and open and closed systems.